What's wrong with the Indigenous welcome to country? It's harmless. It shows respect for our Aboriginal people. Why is it such a problem? And if you don't want to do it, you're just a racist, right? Well, no. Wrong. The welcome to country is pretty sinister. Forget whether or not it's based on real Aboriginal history or is made up. Forget the debate about whether Aboriginal ancestors on this land even had a concept of country as we know it. The welcome to country is a trend that's well past its use by date. In fact, it's past its abused by date. It's overdone, it's a virtue signal, and it's making more and more people uncomfortable every time it's used. Every time a Qantas plane lands, every time a class starts at a university these days, any major public event. Now let me explain, the reason it's bad isn't because of what it says, but what, is, what it does not say, its subtext. There's two main problems with it. First of all, the embedded message is, this is not your country. By repeating that over and over and over again, especially to young kids in schools and making them repeat it, well, it's the oldest indoctrination trick in the book. It creates a sense of not belonging. The idea that if you were born here after 1788, you're not indigenous to this land when you are. So it's a lie. It's misinformation and disinformation. It also creates a false sense that you shouldn't even be here and that you owe other people with other ancestors something. Again, that's just not right. It's a political lie. More disinformation. Australia, the nation, was built by all of our ancestors, thanks. And a nation is much more than just land. Secondly, it leaves a lot of stuff out about other elders to whom we should really also be paying our respects, like our World War I and World War II veterans, for example, of all races. So it's inherently racist and divisive. It divides us into two people, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, not based on where we were born or where we're citizens, but based on where our distant ancestors were born. Again, more disinformation spreading like wildfire, dressed up as something nice and virtuous when it's anything but. Again, it's the left being divisive while pretending to be kind and inclusive. Lots of my old lefty friends are waking up finally. More every day. Are yours? They're starting to see the upside down world that we're being sold into. The racism of so-called modern anti-racism. One man who dislikes this performative ritual as much as I do and agrees that it is time to let it go is Christian leader and organiser of the church and state conferences around the country and the Good Source website, Dave Pello. Dave has been having uh, some troubles of his own lately and he joins us now to explain. Dave, it's been quite a week for you. Uh, before we get into what's happened, and we've got a really big announcement to make shortly, so I want people to hang in for that, but just tell us firstly, what happened? So it's been more than a, a big week, uh, or I guess it, it has become a big week because we've announced what's been happening in secret um, since the event. So the event happened in May, uh, and it was the first stop in a, in a tour of marginal seats in Queensland, a political tour um, undertaken in partnership between church and state and the Australian Christian lobby to uh, speak to Christians who were interested in Christian teaching on the important issues at the upcoming Queensland election. Right. It's my custom to welcome everybody and acknowledge the owner of the country that we're meeting on today. Uh, Psalm 24 verse one says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And of course, everybody in the room is rather relieved that I'm not doing an Aboriginal ritual, um, but a, a, a biblical Christian ritual. Biblical. Okay. Uh, and some people will laugh, some people will clap, some people will say, Amen. At the end of this first meeting, somebody got up and asked me a question, um, you know, aren't you afraid of offending Indigenous people? Uh, and so I gave very strong teaching on the differences between traditional Aboriginal religion, um, by the way, only 2% of Aboriginals um, in the statistics, in the Australian Bureau of Statistics, only 2% of Aboriginal people identify as participating in that religion. 
identify as Christian. Yeah, we're one people. <laughs> we're one nation, go figure. And, and that's the way it should be. But the politics problems aside, and there are, um, there's uh, theological problems with it. And you would expect to hear about theological problems from a Christian teacher in a Christian teaching meeting to Christians. So what happened? You got complained so, about? Yeah, so this person essentially said my, my characterization, which is 100% accurate um, and factual, um, of the, the philosophical categories of Aboriginal religion, which is animism and paganism. Um, you said that. You said it was animistic yeah, and paganistic. I said, yeah. Which is, you would say, is technically correct. I mean, yeah. You're, and, you're, and, okay, so you went all out on that, and, and that is your right, you would think, uh, even though even I if I was disagree wrong. with you. Some, <laughs> and even if you were wrong, yeah. exactly. Even if you were completely wrong. Yeah. Uh, and even if, so you could be wrong, I should be able to d d disagree with you. You should be able to say things yep. that are an opinion that I that I think is horrible. That's what a free country is. And That's you what know free what? speech is. So what happened? Did did you get you got complained about by this person to the Queensland Human Rights Commission? Yeah, this person said they felt they felt set upon, humiliated, and vilified on the grounds of their religion, which I thought they were Christian, and their race. Um, and you know what? I don't know how that's even possible. In fact, I call it a fabrication because so I never right. mentioned Th anything about anybody. I didn't speak to anybody or about anybody or about a group of people. I spoke about a set of ideas. And that's what my comments were directed at. And I won't back away from it. Well, once upon a time, if I disagreed with you, and we do disagree, you and I, we've disagreed many times on things, I would just say, well, we disagree. Why do I have yeah. to go? To, why would you go to a... Human Rights Commission, unless you were launching some sort of and and the perfect attack. example so, is sorry, this. just explain for people because I don't think people get it. You, you can, this could happen to any of us, right? That's why I'm. That's why I'm actually drawing attention to this, is because this You've is such this is such a frivolous complaint. Um, I'm I'm actually confident that unless we get some kind of activist commissioner um, adjudicating the issue, uh, then common sense should prevail. Uh, but the problem is that there is no test for frivolousness. There is no bar that a complaint has to meet to be accepted other than is it in the category of complaints we accept? And then the target has to go through all the stress, all the expense, all yeah. the anxiety, yes. perhaps years of mediation, conciliation and hearings if you refuse to submit and surrender to the demands of the complainant. Uh, this is a sort of government. And on top of that, Dave, just I want to point out, guess who's paying for it? Exactly. The taxpayer. We're That's paying right. for this bureaucratic garbage. Um, we reached out to the Human Rights Commission of Queensland and we got no reply. That's how accountable they think they have to be. So we give you an opportunity, Human Rights Commission, welcome to come on the show. We give you the opportunity to apply, reply this week, perhaps, if you have a media relations person, which I think you do. Uh, but we need to hear your side of the story on this. But this is unacceptable. This is getting ridiculous. We are harassing people. It's the punishment is the, sorry, the process is the punishment. That's right. right? We are harassing Australian citizens for expressing opinions where does this lead? It's a slippery slope. We've had enough, essentially. Yeah. Now, are you okay? Are you? What happens next? You're look. Um, it does. I mean, this isn't my, my my daily routine to to be accused of racism and human rights violations. So yeah, it took me a couple of days to. Um, I was actually on tour, traveling, trying to teach the word of God and and the truth about political issues facing Queenslanders that we should be concerned about real justice issues. Um, and uh, it was a distraction for, for absolute sure. I've, well, I've had enough. This stuff's got to stop in Australia completely, right. and we need to push back hard. We haven't pushed back for years. We haven't pushed back for decades. We're pushing back now. Okay, so please, uh, we've got something to announce. Dave, you want to do that? Just tell, tell everybody what's happening on Tuesday night. Not mucking around here. You're moving fast on this. So yeah, we're look. Gonna, the, we're going to give them a shock they've never, they've never had. We're moving fast on this, and, and urgently we are going to be holding a, uh, a telethon a, a three-hour non-stop free speech event called Defending Democracy. Um, and we are going to have some of the highest calibre, best speakers from, from politics, from journalism, from academia, uh, from independent media. And the goal of the telethon over three hours is to raise a million dollars 
Now, I don't need a million dollars for my defense. It might not take very much at all. Hopefully, common sense prevails and it's dealt with quickly. But of course, the process is the punishment. And so we need the Human Rights Law Alliance, who is the only law clinic in Australia doing pro bono work for the defense of religious freedom, as well as the freedom of speech for non-religious people um, against these, this grievance industry. Um, and it is an industry and it is taxpayer funded against most people's consciences. And so we need um, public servants and teachers and foster parents and other such people who have no voice and no influential friends to have the shield of the Human Rights Law Alliance well funded before the complaint is made against them so that they don't have to go through the stress yeah. and anxiety and their families don't have to go through the stress and anxiety yeah. of, of being I accused get a lawyer? of wrongdoing yeah. when they're completely innocent. It's the big, it's the heavy hand of the bureaucratic state coming down into people's lives, ordinary Australians' lives, and just irritating the living daylights out of us. Yeah. Um, and it's happening more and more and more. It's a subtle, revolting kind of decay in our culture, I think. And we're seeing it. Um, in fact, Justice Gorsuch, I don't know if you saw this, and I'm going to run some of this on the show next week, I hope, but Justice Gorsuch is one of the Supreme Court judges in the United States. Yes. Very esteemed man. He's come out with a new book called Overruled about this very thing, yeah. the fact that bureaucracy is out of control. We have too many laws. There's too many people trying to interfere with people's lives and, and play politics with yeah. the law and lawfare, and we've really got to get a handle on this and stop it. Um, so the pushback starts right here with this bloke. Um, well, it's been, there's been others, right? We've had many cases in the past, but you, you're yeah, a humble and, man. And, I know you and, would never say that. And we'll, we'll have a whole bunch of them on. We'll be, we'll be talking about Lyle Shelton's case, which is still going through, oh, unbelievable. through yeah. the, the Queensland grievance industry for four years. Hundreds of thousands of dollars this can, can run into. And, and Lyle Shelton, innocent accused, um, being forced to fund his own defence, if it wasn't for the shield of the Human Rights Law Alliance, uh, his important political voice would be silenced and would be censored uh, by this pernicious industry. And so we've got to raise a million dollars and millions of dollars for the Human Rights Law Alliance. Everybody just needs to give a little bit. Um, so that'll be embedded live on the Church and State website on Tuesday night, uh, 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 to 8 p.m. Western Time. Um, that's churchandstate.com.au. We'll have a, a link or an embed on the front page um, with all the details uh, being populated there. We've got Warren Mundine and Daisy Cousins and George Christensen and, and a countless of other um, high profile, high calibre speakers, uh, academics like Professor James Allen and uh, Professor Gabriel Moons, Professor Augusto Zimmerman, all constitutional law professors. They're, we're not shooting from the hip like drunkards. This is sober analytical, uh, careful critique of the destruction and damage that's being done to democracy. Um, and so we're going to, in three hours, raise a million dollars um, to defend democracy. Great. Well, I'll be there. Looking forward to it. Looking Tuesday forward night. to uh, having you host the evening with me um, <laughs> in, our, in our little studio. All right, mate. And uh, we'll bring in as many people as we can for a lot of short speeches on, on defending democracy and, and all the ways it's, it's been corrupted um, by successive governments. Thanks for your time, Dave. Thank you so much, Damien. Good to see you. Private internet access is terrific. With all the big government clamped down on online speech lately, you are taking a risk if you don't have a VPN. That's a virtual private network that blocks spying eyes in government or marketing from seeing your IP address and hacking into your data. Now it's super easy and cheap to set it up. It's not technical, even I could do it. And the other side has secured a special deal for our viewers, which will get you uh, set up for 83% off the usual price and with four months free. And get this, that brings the price down to less than $3 a month. It is amazing. So jump on it now, sign up to our special deal and help support us by supporting our sponsors. PIAVPN.com. PIAVPN.com forward slash other side. That's the important bit. Forward slash other side to get the special deal. So that's PIAVPN.com forward slash other side. And even if you've already got a VPN, consider switching to these guys. Since I have, I've had zero reduction in my internet speeds, which was a bit of a problem with the one I was using before. And now I don't even have to think about this one. It's just on automatically whenever I'm on. So it's really great. PIAVPN.com forward slash other side.
Hope you enjoyed that clip. The other side is your weekly analysis of the media's best news and commentary without the woke. And we need your support. Please make sure you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on X at The Other Side on X. It's all totally free to do that. But we could always do with your financial support too. So if you'd like to make a donation, click the super thanks button on YouTube with a little dollar sign and thanks on it right under the video frame below. Even a $2 donation will really help us. And if you're watching on YouTube, do check out the full episode that this clip came from right here.